How would you like to travel to Antarctica, Malibu, and the Helix Nebula all on the same day? Toastmasters and guests, you can't. But what you can do is come to my house because that's where I keep my green screen and my photo equipment. How will that get you to travel to all these places on one day? Well, what is a green screen? A green screen is a green screen. Although sometimes it's blue. And then it's called blue screen. Blue screen. But today, we'll be talking about green screens. A green screen can be made of fabric, paper, or even plastic. The important part is that it is a uniform color. These particular shades of green and blue are chosen because they are not often colors that we take pictures of, which is primarily people and the clothes that they wear. A green screen works by surrounding the person with a uniform color so that that color can be removed or keyed out by a computer program. We're then able to insert a new background of the person's choice anywhere in the world or out of this world. Today I'm going to give you a few laws to green screens as well as give you a map to a fun scenic route for using green screens. Let's get started. The first law is light properly. It's important to light the background as well as the foreground of what you're photographing, photographing in on a green screen. For example, this shadow is caused by the background not being lit properly, and it does not turn out good on the final image. If you also don't like the background, you'll get wrinkles. The girl is also not properly lit, and you get green screen spillage on her shoulder. You also need to light the subject from the back, called backlighting, in order to give the person a good outline. The second part of the law is avoid the edge. When you are taking a picture with a person on a green screen. It's important to look through your camera and make sure that the person you see is completely surrounded by green. If they are not, you'll get something on the ed over the edge. When this happens, there's only two ways to get rid of it. One, to manually go in and trace around the person or reshoot it. Either way, it's a lot of work. The third part, which I'm hoping you've already guessed based off of seeing the really bad photos in the other slides, is this. Watch what you wear. Unless you're going for a really funky picture like this one, you need to make sure that your subjects are not wearing green or else that part of their body will become part of the background. Another color to avoid is certain shades of blue. With certain shades of blue, the, per the person be can become slightly transparent, or that blue can turn into another color. And if you don't backlight properly, shades of white and black can become really fuzzy around the edges. Now you know the law to traveling with green screens. One, light properly. Two, avoid the edges. And three, watch what you wear. Now let's have fun and do the map to making your amateur photo photographs look professional. One, mix up the poses. Rather than just having your subject stand or sit in a chair and do something boring, have them do something exciting. Have them lay on the ground. Have or use that chair, but drape it with a green fabric so that the chair becomes invisible. And then have them lay like Superman so it looks like they're flying or anything that you can think of. The next is add special effects. In addition to having a completely new background, 
you can mess around and play with the actual person. One thing you can do is you can turn the person blue and put them in an underwater scene. Speaking of blue, you can see this man, when photographed with a blue shirt, his blue changed to a darker blue. That was okay with us here because it's a science fiction picture. And that's where you can see this special effect of slight transparency. We were wanting him to look like he was beaming into a spaceship. And the third part of the map is, pose, uh, is props. Give your subject a variety of props so that they look like they are involved in whatever their new background is. For here, we gave the girl a balloon. And you can see it helps her look like she was flying in the sky. Costumes are also really important because then the costume becomes part of the setting and it looks like the person is part of the background and you can't tell when you're using a green screen. These are the three parts of the map. So mix up your poses, add special effects, and use props and costumes liberally. However you travel with green screens, so long as you obey the law and take a map, you are sure to have a great time. And when you travel by green screen, the greatest part of all is that you don't even need a passport. Bon voyage.